thank you for all uh, joining this morning uh, for another month of our uh, monthly safety call. Hey, I got it. Here. We've got a few items on the agenda that we're going to talk about, as well as there's some updates that um, Xenia would like covered today. So we appreciate you guys joining, and um, we'll go ahead and get started. David. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? <clears throat> I'm a, I've got a, a couple, three things I want to talk about this morning. Uh, the first one is is defensive driving. Uh, defensive driving is something that uh, requires you to be paying attention to your surroundings, situational awareness, uh, knowing where who's next to you, who's not next to you, who's speeding up, coming, who's coming to you, who's on the ramp, who's not on the ramp. Uh, it's a situation where you're always looking around you, paying attention. That's the only way to be defensive. If you're if you're doing something else and you're not really paying attention, that's when little things can happen uh, that you miss, and that can lead to a bigger thing. Um, um, one of the other things is move your move over laws. Uh, in the state of California, we have a law that says that when uh, you have an emergency vehicle with flashing lights on the on the uh, shoulder of the road you must move over one lane or slow down to 15 miles an hour below the speed limit so um if you can if you because you may not be able to go over it's slowing down at the same time any vehicle that is on the side of the road either fire or or um, towing or uh, emergency service of any kind that has a flashing light on the shoulder of the road you have to move over one lane uh, to avoid that um april is um tackle driving awareness month okay uh, wait let me go back a little bit because this state has something that's different it's probably best that you find the most stringent law, and I think California is probably the really most stringent law, and obey that law in every state you go to. Trying to remember what state you're in, what the law for each state, uh, I don't think it's very effective. You need to just find out which one is, is the most stringent and follow that one in all the procedures, everything you do. That way you remember that whenever you see that light, you can go, okay, not, not, uh, figure out, well, let's see, I'm in this state, this state's law is this, this state's law. That's a distraction as well. So you may not want to be able to do that. Uh, anyway, April is the Distracted Driving Awareness Month. Um, and that means that you need to be conscious of the things that are distractions. And one of the things that is distractions, uh, hands-free is not necessarily risk-free. Uh, you're required not to hold the phone in your hand but having it on your head and listening and carrying on a conversation, that is a distraction. It's a cognitive distraction. I think I have, uh, in one of my uh, presentations to you, talked to you about multitasking, that you cannot really multitask. What you can do is what's called micro shifting. You can, your mind goes from, let's say you're doing two things at the same time, your mind goes from one to the other back and forth between the two. That is how you're able to do two things. But at that point where you're doing something that is uh, that can cause you to hesitate there, such as a phone conversation, because a phone conversation requires you to think about what it is you're doing. And you get involved in the conversation and then your whatever you're doing other than that becomes secondary you're not multitasking so um i like to have my drivers not make phone calls while they're on the road and i have family members to call us before uh, if there's an issue at home that the driver needs to know about and we can tell determine when they are at rest or in a, at a rest stop or someplace where they can be called and said this is this is what's going on your family wants you to call them but carrying on a conversation the entire time uh, is not uh, is is not being aware of what's going on because your brain can't do those two things. But now you may get away with it, but that doesn't mean that the one time that you're 
that uh, you forget to do it, that you, it won't cause you to have an accident because little things can become big things. Little things that you, you forget to do, uh, uh, you forget to put your, your drink in a place where you can get it without having to look for it. Um, you forget to uh, leave your lights on. Uh, you forget uh, little 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 things of forget forgetfulness, not having a uh, uh, being able to look in the mirror or uh, having something uh, that's not that you want to have available, but you you forgot to put it where it's supposed to go. All these things contribute to uh, contribute to uh, a situation where you don't remember what it is you're doing. Always remember pay attention to what's going on right now. I uh, had a meeting last month with, uh, believe it or not, the president of FedEx Ground. He came out to California and there were four or five of us contractors that he wanted to meet with. And one of the issues that we talked about was safety um, and how we can uh, be uh, a safer company. Now, I had to tell him that his equipment <laughs> is not always the best, uh, but that uh, having a having a culture of safety is really the issue. Lugmo has a culture of safety. That is, every month you get 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 something or get some advice or some information on how to be safe. Safety is not something that you put on like you put on your uniform. Safety is something that is a part of you. It should always be a part of you, even when you're not in the truck. You should be thinking about safety, how to avoid issues. It's 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 a habit. It's not a thing that you can just decide to do at a point. It should be a habit. Um, I have a couple of other items here. Um, trailer tandems. Uh, Florida has a trailer a trailer tandem where you're the axle has to be no more than 41 feet from the kingpin, which is, I guess, assumed of you that's pulled all the way up uh, as far as it can go. So uh, you need to know what to do if you get to a set of axles that are too far back for, what, for, for whatever reason. Uh, do you know how to set the air? Do you know how to pull the pin? Do you know how to lock those air tandem and the back up? To until they lock back in again. Those are things you need to do. You need to know on how to adjust your tandems so that you're no more than the 41 feet. Uh, you can be fined uh, pretty heavily and also pulled over to the side of the road and be uh, uh, disqualified in quotes or uh, uh, not being able to move until those tandems are in the right position. Okay, so be aware of that. And and if you don't know what it is, find out what it is and practice it, the being able to know how to do that. Um, this is all a, um, this is all, a, the, if you're a professional driver, these are all things that you need to be aware of as a professional driver. Uh, work constantly to be the best you can be. Be your A game to whatever. And um, a couple of little side notes. Uh, we just had, we just got some new trucks, and um, the people that installed our, uh, reinstalled our cameras, put them in the wrong place. And I mean the wrong place, meaning that uh, the uh, if they put the the visor down, it covers up the lens. So we had to go back and have them have them lower the camera so that uh, when the visor is down to for so that you're not in uh, you're blocking the sun. It also does not block the camera. Uh, I've had, I've seen drivers put their cap on top of the camera because, in quotes, they don't want to be they don't want to be observed all the time. Well, guess what? That's violation of the contract uh, for FedEx Ground. Uh, you need to have your camera where it's not covered up because if something happens, and you and the camera of the uh, Legmo does not have a copy of the uh, the video for that, it can cost as much as $75,000 in addition to um, the whatever the whatever the, the proof that you were doing something correctly. Uh, so think about that. 
if your camera's in the right place, that's fine. Uh, but don't cover it up. Don't put something in front of it. Okay. Have it so that you and the front of the uh, front of the truck are visible. Um, and, you, and uh, speaking of the camera, do you know how to push the panic button on your on your camera? Every camera, uh, Vader better has a has a panic button, meaning that if something is event that occurs around you that you're not sure of, or somebody tries to tries to uh, break uh, break brake pedal in front of you, you can push that button and it'll record for you so that you have evidence that someone brake checked you, okay? And it started an incident. And the reason I say that is because we had we had a driver who exactly that happened to three weeks ago. He was, uh, I don't know what he was doing, but the truck in front of him, not the truck, but a car pulled in front of him and brake checked him. Well, he hit the button and we had a, we had a recording of it, and we reported that to the CHP, California Highway Patrol, because we had the license plate, license plate, and everything. And I don't know whether it was something was issued to him, but that person now is going to have to deal with the fact that they break checked, which is illegal, and there's there's video evidence of it. So that's one of the reasons why you really need to know how to record, even if your your braking hard or your turning left or right uh, doesn't trigger. Okay. Um, and the, the last thing I have is um, when we had a, we got our new trucks. One of the things that uh, happened was the bunk net was all wrapped up and uh, not put where the drivers could fasten them. If you are in a sleeper. You need to have your bunk net on all the time. Now, it is not an inspection requirement, but the law says that the, you have to have a bunk restrainer that will stop stop you from uh, 60, at 60 pounds of pressure, keep you from falling out of the bunk. So if you're sleeping in the bunker, you really want to have that bunk net on. Uh, not having the bunk net on at a speed of 45 miles an hour can mean that you will go flying out of your bunk and actually through the windshield of your vehicle. I don't think you want that. And it's not that uncomfortable to have the bunk net on to, to avoid being hurt. The other thing is if you, you, it can save you from a serious accident. Um, our company was involved in a, in an accident, not our fault. You were proved to be innocent by the NTSB. But one of the, the co-driver, even with a net, hit his head on the back of the seat of the the uh, uh, the driver's seat. Okay, and he was out for probably six months or so with a concussion. And but think about how serious it could have been if he was not restrained by his bunk net. <clears throat> he could have had permanent brain damage. So these are the kinds of things you need to think about. Be alert. Be aware. Pay attention to what's going on around you all the time. Safety is not a thing that you uh, practice when you get in the truck. It's something that you're in all the time. Pay attention. Any questions? All right, we're going to show this video um, here really quick in regards to the move over laws. I think we showed it before, but for those that are new, make sure it's on the right. All right, perfect. Highway Patrol. Every day, public safety professionals, highway workers, and tow truck drivers are faced with the hazard of working on the side of busy freeways. In California, Section 21809 of the Vehicle Code addresses this hazard. Motorists are required to make a lane change into an available lane that is not immediately next to a stationary authorized emergency vehicle, tow truck, or Department of Transportation vehicle that is displaying emergency lights or flashing amber warning lights. In the event that it is unsafe or impractical for a motorist to change lanes, then the driver is required to slow down to a reasonable and prudent speed that is safe for existing conditions. 
You may ask, what is a reasonable speed to slow down to? Well, think of it this way. The side of the freeway is where we work every day. Imagine being at your job. Now imagine cars and trucks driving past you only a few feet away at freeway speeds. How fast do you think would be reasonable? Now imagine that officer, firefighter, paramedic, Caltrans worker, or tow truck driver is a member of your family. They may not be your loved one, but they are someone's. Taking a moment to be more cautious as you drive past these workers and public safety professionals will not only make their day safer, but it will also be appreciated and it may save you the cost of a traffic citation. So slow down, move over. You can make sure that we all get home at the end of the day. On behalf of public safety professionals, tow truck drivers, the California Department of Transportation and the California Highway Patrol, thank you. All right. Okay, I think um, Mike or or Willem, you guys wanted to share something in today's call for uh, for Xenia. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mike can go first. All right, thank you. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, sir. All right, state of Florida is pulling drivers over for not getting over, as David said, when they've got somebody pulled over in the right hand lane. Lately on the turnpike, state troopers have been sitting just past where the roadside assistance people have been helping out somebody change a tire and a state trooper sitting on the other side waiting for somebody to not get over. If you can't get over, at least put on your left-hand blinker to show that you're trying to edge over and slow down. As far as 41 foot, the inner bridge law, there's a very easy way to tell if you are under 41 feet, your kingpin is three feet, 36 inches from the front of the trailer. 41 feet plus three feet is 44 feet. On a 53 foot trailer, that leaves you nine feet from the back end. The center of your trailer tandems has to be more than nine feet from the back of your trailer. Look at the panels right above your tires on the trailer. That's usually a four foot panel, give or take an inch. Count two and a half panels. That's 10 feet from the back end of the trailer. If you're at least that far from the back of the trailer, you won't be over the inner bridge. As David said, easy rule, slide your tandems all the way up. State of Florida lets you have 44,000 pounds on your tandems, whether it's your drives or your trailer tandems, as long as you're under gross. That's 44, not 34,000. There is almost no reason if you're taking a trailer in the state of Florida and not leaving, not going to Georgia, not going to South Carolina, et cetera, for you to be in violation of the inner bridge. The purpose of that law is to allow you to make the turns to get around the streets when you get off the highways, that type of stuff. They are installing at the Wildwood scales, the way in motion. They are putting in the full camera setup. They are going to be able to detect if you are over the inner bridge law from the highway and pull you in. They are going to have that instituted across the entire state. So you need to know how to tell how, how far up your trailer tandems are. Any questions? That'd be it. Thank you. All right, now for the FedEx update, uh, I believe Amado's in, the, in there. He's going to do the FedEx update. Gotcha. All right. Uh, the FedEx update is mostly, you know, use your seatbelt, all that in the yard, on a roll, whatever you are. Make sure you all, you have your seat bells on all the time. And the dollies cannot be left anywhere in the yard. They got to be taken to a specific place and never let, never leave them unattended unless you're dropping it where it's supposed to go. 
All right, the Lugmar days, I'll take care of it. Uh, well, you got it? Got it? Yeah, I got it. Uh, right. As you guys know, Sydney unfortunately cannot be with us today. So she left us in charge of this. She wants to say happy birthday to all the drivers who were born in March. And also, she would like us to, to let you guys know, all the drivers, that either Wilhelm, Jamie, or myself are going to be doing the, pre the, the preventive maintenance inspection that we do every month. And she will like us. She will like for you guys to join us whenever we do your truck. So we'll get together with you guys, figure out a time and date, so you can see what we go through and how we do it. And then she says, "Thank you to all the drivers who takes care of the equipment. Thank you for keeping track this clean and for letting us know in timely manner if there's any issue with your equipment. Also, remember, no trailer should be moved off the dock." Rainy weather, slow down, adjust speed and conditions. Think, be alert, and make good choices. And thank you all for all the wonderful work you do. And we'll talk again next month. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you.